Managers in the Workplace. Tom Peters is known for futuristic thinking. If you click on Tom Peters, you will find a video that will last approximately 45 minutes. The objectives of today's lecture is to explain why managers are important to the organization, tell who managers are and where they work, know how to manage your time, describe the functions, roles, and skills of managers, describe the factors that are reshaping and redefining the manager's job, develop your skills at being politically aware, explain the value of studying management, describe some of early management examples, explain the various theories in the classical approach, discuss the development and uses of behavioral approach, describe the quantitative approach, and explain the various theories in the contemporary approach. In traditionally structured organizations, managers can be classified as either first line, middle, or top management. Top managers make organizational wide decisions and establish goals and plans that affect the entire organization. The middle manager, managers are responsible to execute the objectives of the organization through directing first line managers who manages the non-managerial employees, and the non-managerial employees has no managerial responsibility. And an organization has a distinct purpose typically expressed through goals of the organization that they hope to accomplish. It takes people to perform that work that's necessary for the organization to achieve its goals. All organizations develop a deliberate structure within which members do their work. And then the question is, can you describe an organization that you have worked for into the three distinct characteristics? Efficiency, efficiency refers to getting the most output from the least amount of inputs or resources. Managers deal with scarce resources, including people, money, and equipment, and want to use those resources efficiently. Effectiveness is often described as doing the right thing. That is, doing those work activities that will result in achieving the goals. Whereas efficiency is concerning the means of getting things done, effectiveness is concerned with the ends or attainment of the organizational goals. Can you identify a time when you were efficient but not effective? Managers engage in planning. They set goals, establish strategies, for, achieve, for achieving those goals and develop plans to integrate and coordinate the activities. When managers organize, they determine what tasks needs to be done, who is to do those tasks, and how the tasks are to be grouped, who reports to whom, and where decisions are to be made. When manager leads subordinates, they help resolve work conflicts, influence individuals or teams as they work, select the most efficient communication channel, or deal in any way with employees' behavior that they're leading. The Mintz for Manager role model indicates that managers assume specific roles that include interpersonal, informational, and decisional. The interpersonal roles involve people in other ceremonial and symbolic duties. The three interpersonal roles include figurehead, leader, and liaison. The informational role involved collecting, receiving, and disseminating information. The three informational role includes monitor, disseminator, and spokesperson. The decisional role entails making decisions or choices and include entrepreneurial, disturbance handler, resource allocator, and negotiator. What type of skills do manager need? Robert Katz proposed a manager will need three critical skills in managing. Technical, human, and conceptual. Technical skills are the job-specific knowledge and techniques needed to proficiently perform work tasks. These skills tend to be more important for first-line managers because they typically manage employees who use tools and techniques to produce the organizational products or services for the organizational customers. Human skills involve the ability to work well with other people, both individually and in groups. Because all manager deals with people, these skills are equally important to all three levels.
Finally, conceptual skills are the skills managers are used to think and to conceptualize about abstract and complex situations. Using these skills, managers see the organization as a whole, understand the relationship among the various subunits, and visualize how the organization fits into its broader environment. These skills are the most important for top managers. In today's world, managers are dealing with global economic and pol political uncertainties, changing the workplace ethical issues, security threats, and changing technology. It's likely that most managers will have to manage under such demanding circumstances. It is important to understand the past to realize the advancements and mistakes made by each man management era. Many have argued that there's no great new management ideas, but rather a series of making the same mistakes. By understanding the historical management philosophies, these mistakes can be avoided. We will focus on the 20th century management approaches. However, I do not want to discount what you can learn from previous managers in other centuries. The first scientific studies in management were called the classical approach studies, which emphasized rationality and making organizations and workers as efficient as possible. The quantitative approach evolved from mathematical and statistical solution developed for military problems during World War II to make decisions. In other words, use math and models when making any type of decision. TQM, or Total Quality Management, is an example of this approach. The behavior approach is focused on the actions of people at work and how it affects their productivity and happiness. The contemporary approach focuses on the systems and, and the contingency approaches. The system approach says that an organization takes in inputs from the environment and transform or process these resources into outputs that are distributed into the environment. The contingency approach says that, the, that organizations are different, face different situations, and require a different way of managing. Another area where Quantitative techniques are used frequently is in total quality management. A quality revolution swept through both the business and public sectors in the 1980s and 1990s. It was inspired by a small group of quality experts. The most famous was Edward Deming. The ideas and techniques he advocated in the 1950s had few supporters in the United States but were enthusiastically embraced by Japanese organizations. As the Japanese manufacturer began beating the U.S. competitors in quality comparisons, we began to take notice in the West. Total Quality Management, or TQM, is a management philosophy devoted to continual improvement and responding to customer wants and needs and expectations. Here are the famous Deming's 14 points. This will be your first class in class assignments and we'll, we will discuss this offline. And for those of you who would like to do the optional homework assignments, here are the five assignments.